Hello, and welcome to Getting It Done, a podcast about music, education, and life lessons. I'm your host, Tim Rausenberger, and today is Thursday, June 13th, 2019. This is episode 285, Six Maintenance Tips for Brass Instruments. Well, it's that time of year again, Time to collect all the instruments and add them to the inventory at school. You want to make sure that all the instruments are turned in. And we're always in such a rush to make sure that the serial numbers are matching, that the right instrument is in the right case, that the case hasn't suffered any type of damage, that the instruments don't have any massive dents or any types of issues that we need to be concerned about as directors or the school or the district might need to be concerned about in terms of replacements or repairs. But here's the problem that I've noticed over the years. Notice that there are some basic maintenance things that we as teachers sometimes are fully aware of, but we forget to enforce these maintenance tips all the time with our students. So with that, I'm going to go through this list of six. And you may have some others. And if you do, please, I encourage you to to make some comments below. Hit the like button while you're at it. That would be great. But if you could leave some comments below with any types of suggestions you have that could be added to this list. Because after all, we're all in this together and we're all looking to learn from one another. All right, let's start with number one mouthpieces. And there are really two main concerns when it comes to mouthpieces in terms of maintenance. Uh, the first thing that you need to be aware of is, and I'm looking at two different mouthpieces here, uh, one of them is, uh, they're both trumpet mouthpieces, one of them is a 3C and the other one is a 7C. Uh, the, the, the name and the make Uh, We're not going to go into that right now. It's somewhat irrelevant in terms of what I want to address today. But the mouthpiece, when I'm looking at these two, this one for sure, uh, to be perfectly blunt, it's gross inside of here. It's very, very dirty. It looks like the, the student just didn't do much in the way of cleaning the mouthpiece much throughout the year, which is unfortunate. It's something that I need to be aware of as a teacher because even though I remind my students to frequently uh, clean their mouthpieces, whether it's using uh, cotton swabs or tissues or paper towels, and we have the disinfectant spray, which I have available at all times for them, and I remind them frequently, sometimes some students are either embarrassed or they just simply forget to do it. And again, in the rat race of trying to uh, go through a lesson, take advantage of your class time, get ready for a concert, we can forget these basic things. So the student in this case, I would like to give that person the benefit of the doubt that he just didn't realize that all of this was lurking inside of there. Now, some other things, of course, we have with the, the mouthpieces, which I think are of greater concern, uh, damage to the mouthpiece, more specifically to the rim. The thing we have to be very careful of when, as teachers, uh, and this is really coming from more a medical or a health perspective, uh, are the little nicks that can occur, little scratches. And if we have enough of those and they go deep enough, uh, we, can, we have exposed metal. That's a major problem. And in a lot of cases, you have to actually just simply throw the mouthpiece away because the mouthpieces ra- tend to range in cost anywhere from $20 to $50, trumpet mouthpieces anyway. And the amount of money it would cost to do any type of repairing or relacquering might be the same or surp- surpass that amount. And for that reason, you may have to just throw it away altogether. Uh, but safety first. So that's something to definitely keep in mind and something to think about as the school year is going on rather than just finding out in June. And again, having done this for 24 years, there are only so many things that we can address and and hope that our students are listening and are, are responding and are letting us know if they're having any types of issues with their equipment. 
So that's the first thing with the mouthpiece. The second thing with the mouthpiece uh, is the size of the mouthpiece. Now, with most beginner model instruments, the size that they give you is this size over here, which is a 7C. Now, the 7C is, well, it's typically designed for smaller mouth, smaller embouchure, sm smaller embouchure, smaller aperture. And for all of those reasons, the 7C is a great mouthpiece for beginners. The problem is that in my particular case, I have beginners, but they're older. And because they're older kids, a lot of these 7C mouthpieces are not as comfortable as some of the larger models, such as a 5C or a 3C. So one of the things that I've been doing as I've been collecting the instruments this year is I've been paying very, very close attention to make sure that everybody was actually playing on a 3C or a 5C mouthpiece. Now, while I did ensure that everybody had one of those at the beginning of the year, things happened. Kids are kids. And I do have other mouthpieces here, and they're 7C. A lot of them are 7C mouthpieces. And some of the students may have swapped the mouthpieces, whether they told me or they didn't tell me. Again, these things happen over the course of a school year. So I was very careful to make sure to look through the, mouth, the, the, uh, the cases of the instruments, to look at the mouthpieces, and to find which ones were, in fact, 3C and 5C uh, sized mouthpieces. Make sure the 7Cs are not in those cases and get be able to have a fresh start at the beginning of the next school year. So that's enough about mouthpieces. Slides, number two. Uh, slides obviously are so, so important in the instrument because for all different types, for, for many different types of reasons, of course, we need to be able to uh, to clean the instrument at any given time in terms of tuning purposes, particularly the tuning slide. This particular instrument, at the start of the year, all of the slides moved with no problem at all. I remember that because we have very, very few uh, trumpets that are silver uh, in our inventory. And I remember this particular instrument passing it out to the student. And once again, we talk about lubricating the instrument throughout the course of the year. The students have grease, they have oil. Uh, are they doing it though? That's the bigger and better question. So we're going to take a look at this instrument right now. And if I look at this first valve slide, this one is moving. It's definitely lacking the grease. The second valve slide, which can frequently be problematic, and in this particular case, uh, part of it is missing, which happens a lot. This one is absolutely stuck. Third one does move. Uh, it moved very quickly, and it also feels like there's almost nothing in way of uh, grease, any type of lubricant on there. And I do know actually from trying before, <clears throat> this one, uh, the metal's bonded with the metal, the tuning slide is completely stuck. Now, uh, a, a way that there are many different methods you can use to try to free up your slides. You need to be careful. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. If when in doubt, just don't do it. Get someone else who has a clue, knows what they're doing with repairing any type of instruments, especially because this is a piece of metal. And if we bend metal the wrong way and uh, you cause any types of issues to it, that's going to compromise the strength of the metal. So with that in mind, this particular slide, I know that tomorrow I'm probably going to be spending some time trying to just loosen the bond uh, by very, very lightly tapping on, uh, tapping all around the area with a rawhide hammer or a rubber hammer. Uh, so I'm not damaging the metal itself, but I am going to try to get this free. If it, that doesn't work, it may be going into uh, the repair shop for them to take a good look at it. But keeping the slides lubricated. Now, in a perfect world, all these slides will be able to move. And even if the grease has come off of the slide, what you then need to do, once you get these instruments as they're being turned in, you must take that opportunity to lubricate the slides. It needs to happen because if you don't do it now and the slides are moving just fine in June, by the time September rolls around, it, it, they're not going to move. It, it's, it's inevitable. And if they do move, you're lucky. Uh, but 
you need to err on the side of caution and assume they're not going to be able to move too well. Which moves, uh, moves me along to number three, uh, the lead pipe trick. This is something I learned from a repair technician at Dillon Music in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Many of you know, may know Dylan. Uh, they are really, it's a brass player's paradise uh, down there. And one of the things that I learned from uh, a tech who had worked uh, at, at Jardinelli's for a very long time was simply taking uh, some oil. And this is for not for trumpets, for any brass instrument. If you know you're not going to be playing for any extended period of time, a week or more was what he said. Take the oil and just squeeze some into the lead pipe. Maybe four, five, six drops into the lead pipe. And the purpose of this is to then move the oil around the entire instrument. Just having that additional lubricant in the instrument can help with just keeping everything in working order, whether it gets into the valves, whether it gets into the slides, it's just a really good thing to do. It's so basic and it's so easy to do. So have that valve oil on hand as you're collecting those instruments at school and just squeeze a few drops in there before you leave for the summer. I think some of you will be very surprised at your results when you come back uh, at the beginning of the next school year. Valves and the caps. For the valves. Now it goes without saying that the valves need to be oiled. What I have found over the course of my career is that students will have valves that will be in excellent condition to them, meaning that the valves go up and down just fine with no problem whatsoever. So what does that mean? It means that they don't need any oil. Couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, the analogy I like to give to students is I say, have you ever heard of your parents getting an oil change for their car? And they'll say, yes. I'll say, there's a reason we do this. Will the car continue to operate without the oil being changed? The answer is yes. Is it good long term for the health and well-being of the vehicle? And the answer is a big no. So it's the same thing when it comes to instruments. And one of the things that I show students right away when I take the valve out is I'll even have them sometimes feel the valve and notice that, and I feel it right now, it just is either bone dry or it'll just feel like water. It won't feel at all uh, oily, greasy, anything like that. There'll be no sense of that, that lubrication. So it's really important that uh, you do make sure when you collect those instruments to uh, to oil the the valves. But here's the bigger one that a lot of people forget to do: the caps. You need to make sure those caps move. And on this instrument, oh, the second one just got loose. It wasn't loose before. The third one is stuck. So this one, same thing. I'm just going to do some light taps of, of a rawhide or rubber hammer. Uh, you don't want to use a metal hammer because it, you'll dent it. Uh, but if you use that, just a few little taps, hopefully break the seal and we'll be good to go. And what I'll even sometimes do with these, a teeny tiny little drop of valve oil on the threads of the cap and that will keep those caps, uh, hopefully, uh, from getting stuck in the future. So valves and valve caps, extremely important. Number five, your water keys. And I'm actually gonna transition to the trombone here for a minute. The water keys, there are two main things you wanna check with the water keys. Number one, you wanna make sure that the cork is not about to pop out or it's about to come off. And number two, you wanna make sure that the seal is nice and tight. How can you check that? Well, you play the instrument, try the instrument out. And if you play the, the instrument and you, uh, hopefully there's not gonna be any water uh, seeping out of it or any air uh, coming out, uh, which I have had happen uh, many times with student instruments before, but the contraption over the course of time, the entire water key, uh, I've had them just fall off altogether. I have had uh, them be out of alignment. So this is a really, really important 
uh, thing that we want to address. There are few things more aggravating than having to get a water key repaired in the middle of a school year. Uh, repair shops seem to be busier than ever now, and even a basic water key swap can take some time, and now the instrument is not available in school. So it's really, really key to take care of your water keys. Make sure to check that, that the seal is there, that it's in alignment, and double check the cork, or whatever it is that's holding the air and the water in place. And then finally, number six, trombone slides and also the locks. Now, the slide itself, of course, we have the outer slide and the inner slide. This particular one, so I'm hearing that clunk and there's a reason why, which I'll get to in a second, because it's relating to uh, the lock on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the slide itself. But this one, I don't know if you can hear it too well on the, the microphone, it's a scratchy type of sound. Uh, this one, this slide of course should have dropped by now, it has not. Uh, this is in desperate need of lubrication. Uh, so certainly, again, make sure to do this and don't rush. Just like with the trumpet valves, you would actually want to take the valves out, wipe them down completely, and put the fresh coat of oil on. Same thing would apply for the trombone. Take your, your paper towel, your, your tissue, whatever it is, a soft rag, wipe it down thoroughly, get all the gunk that's on there off, and then put your fresh coat of whatever lubricant you desire on the slide. Now, the reason I'm getting that irritating sound. Unfortunately, the threads on this particular slide lock are not quite lined up. So one of my students, uh, unfortunately, must have been in a rush to try to close the slide lock. Didn't let me know about the fact that the slide lock was, uh, was not working properly. And uh, th again, this happens. I, I, I don't try to ever act like I'm, I'm a perfect teacher because I'm not, and none of us are. It doesn't matter. In, uh, with our best possible attempts to make sure that the instruments are in excellent working order, no matter how many times we may say it to students, things happen every single year. Never gone through a blemish-free year in terms of uh, anything with the instruments. I can actually say this is the first year I've gone through where I've not had a valve completely frozen, a slide completely frozen, or a water key fall off altogether. But even still, you'll notice all these other things that come around. And if you've been doing this uh, for long enough, you know that uh, kids are kids, and that's what makes them amazing at the same time. I hope that these six uh, maintenance tips for brass instruments have been very helpful to you. Again, if you have more ideas, uh, other tips to share, please put them in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to our, our channel. We're growing by leaps and bounds every day. And I appreciate you checking out this video on maintenance for brass instruments.